Welcome to One Interview by Night, where we interview the people who make the One World by Night LARP network happen. Tonight, we have Will, the Venture Record, with us. Will, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Will Wadhams. I am the Venture Record. Nice to meet you all. All right. So the way we usually start off is ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and about your history in the org. Well, as I said, my name is Will. Uh, I go by many names, uh, but Will is usually the best one I go by. Uh, I am, God, I've been with the org for a very long time, uh, 2001 uh on and off and uh i love my the clan i i'm the cord for i i truly love the clan for all the history of that clan that gives us the perfect uh intro to tell us about what you do as coordinator and what are your plans for clan venture that you uh, can talk about uh what i can talk about is my main purpose right now is to bring love to the entire clan. That includes the CAM, the Anarchs, and the Sabat. I have a strong coordinator subcord team. I listen and talk to them at least each and every one of them at least once every two weeks, if not more. Big plans right now is to get packets out, do some shakeups here and there plot-wise, try to give some love to the Venturi anti tribute as well uh, because they do have a rich history in the sword and they should not be ignored. My purpose, it, my overall purpose is to make the clan, the clan in the office accessible to all players who want to play Venturi or wish to know more about playing Venturi. Great. So since you mentioned packets, uh, what packets are you working on right now? The three big ones are the updated Clan Venture Packet, the Clan Venture Dignitas Packet, which is mostly Camarilla stuff, uh, a Venture Anti-Tribute Packet, and there is a fourth Top Secret Packet. Oh, I'm glad to hear this is going to be an anti-packet. That's going to be great. I, ha I have to thank Lex Lopez for starting that during his term. Uh, he did not, he wasn't able to finish it, but I am trying to find time to make them work and be in line what's best for the org. Great. Since you want your office to be accessible, how would you ideally like to work with players? Basically, my way of working with players is always with their STs. So it can be just a simple OOC, hey, I'm thinking about playing this, I added my STs. Sure. What are you looking, my questions are usually, what are you looking to do? What what drives you to be this clan? What do you understand about the clan? What don't you understand about the clan? How can we help you make those goals happen? You want to play a venture in a, a domain that is dearth of the clan because, because of bad players? Okay, let's see what we can do with your staff to make that happen. There are games where venture players kind of screwed the pooch around people. You got to work ways around that and make it work. So it's a lot of talking with the players. It's a lot of talking with staff and it's coming to an agreement that is best for, not for just the clan genre, but for the players well-being, for the game's well-being, for everybody's well-being. It's finding that middle ground and making it work. Ventures should be leaders, even in the sword, they should be leaders. They don't have to have titles behind them, but when they, the first thing they should do is I step up and I lead. It should just come second nature. It's a hard thing to do for some. And I get that. And I hope to help give them tools to do that. They might not lead the charge into battle, but, you know, they might lead that entire influence dump that everybody's throwing together. So, you know, they might put their name on the line to do that influence dump. Those are all noble things. It's how they want to play and helping them play the way they want to play. Is there anything else as coordinator you would like to touch on? I'm working with a couple cords and a couple projects. Namely, the big one right now is the Herodin plot going on in the org. I put forth a candidate from my office, as did the Nosferatu cord and so on and so forth. That's a big thing. Hopefully people, a lot of Camerlin players are having access to that as best as they can. Another thing I'm working on is a couple side plots because, well, my office has a couple NPCs that are up and about that people are really grabby hands to get to talk to, I should say. 
other than that, if you know, you know, if you don't, well, you should talk to your local venture and see who, who the hell is awake and why, why you should be concerned. All right. So now we get the always what's really fun is uh, who do you play? Currently, my character right now is Virgil Palermo, Anarch Extraordinaire. He's a mover and shaker. He's known in a lot of circles. Honestly, my big, my most known character is the late, great uh, Julian St. John, also known as, f- formerly known as Archon Gaius to his Arbiter Elegates of Clan Toreador. Uh, I have a couple other characters here and there. I have Sir Alexi Ap Skethic. Uh, my changeling, and I do have also Nick Golly, who is my glasswalker thurge. So, all right. So, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I'm open to questions if you have them. It's, you, you never know. You, I know you play Sabat a lot, and I know you have concerns and stuff like that. I do, so. and I don't, I've never played a Ventru. I don't know a whole lot about Ventru uh, genre. So actually, that's a great question. What is, uh, what would you think would be how you would describe Ventru genre uh, for each of the sex? Okay. In like a short elevator pitch. All right. Well, here's the thing. Ventru. I'm going to give you the, the base answer for Venture, which is straight Cameron. We are the leaders of the world. We brought ourselves from this, which was nobility, this, that, and the other thing, to basically being money market, being business, being the, you know, being entrepreneurs. Anarchs are kind of the same, but they do it on more on the down low. They're they're not they're not the top-notch echelon of things. They just kind of I, I don't go for upper management. I go for that middle manager who knows more than the, than the CEO. Go for that one guy who's the go-getter, who just knows more than everybody else does because he just talks. Sabat. I'm going to give you the dirty secret about Sabat. Sabat Ventru are literally the true Ventru from the Dark Ages. Every single one of them betrayed their clan, or I should say betrayed the merchants of the clan to be the warriors of the clan. And in doing that, they threw their lot in with the sword. That is a real cut, short, sweet, cut and dry. They are the fallen knight. They are the ones who have fell upon their oaths to serve the sword. Their job is to get things done. And it's not always influence. It's they're the they're not the beat stick, but they're the guy who can just browbeat somebody into getting things done. Yeah, they're um best way to put it. Um they can be the commanders, the generals. <laughs> The influence, uh, of course, they can do influence. I mean, that's a venture thing. Yeah. But they can be that battlefield leader as well yep. as political leader. Yep. Can be the leader. They can be the frontline shield to so those who are too weak to take the hit. They can be that one to show them the way. Again, like you said, knights. I'm, they're, I know they're, for those who don't play Sabat, their nickname in the Sabat are the Crusaders. Yep. Yep. Knowing from the Dark Ages that during that time, Ventru themselves tied themselves to nobility and the ideals of knighthood. At the end of the Dark Ages, Ventru were solely slipping into the merchant class, making money, global trade, things like that. That divide with the Anarch Revolt and the Treaty of Thorn, the elders of Clan Ventru doubled down on the mercantile system and said, we will forget the old ways. We still have our beat sticks, but we're going to forget that, you know, we were soldiers. Unless we have to be soldiers again. They rested on their Lord. In the Sabbat's eye, the Sabbat, the Ventry Anti Tribute's eyes, Elder's eyes, is the Ventry rested on the easy win, at least to them. Case in point is uh, Kyle Strathcona. Uh, he used to be my character's Cardinal. I have inter- yeah. interacted with Strathcona. He's great. He is. The latecomer to the sword, but you can see even in his backstory where his doubts were, you can tell he could see that the message was lost. And he did the only thing he could do was to hand most of Canada over to the sword, especially Montreal. That was his baby. Another thing, I'm working with the Ravnos Court uh, for a Ventru bloodline that we're bringing into play. That is, we're slowly bringing into play. Uh, we've been working on it since I became Cord. 
Uh, I know it was talked about with Lex as well. We are bringing, we brought the bloodline known as the Danava into play full bore. We have been looking for people to play it. And we've been looking both Cam, Anarch, well, all three, Cam, mostly Cam and Sabat, because Anarchs don't really happen in India. Imagine that. Um, but that said, I know we've already approved a couple of them in play. Uh, we're hoping to get them out more and get venture interested in talking to them and making connections with them. So why don't you describe who they are? Um, they are, in a very Hindu sense, they are what we call Brahmin. They are holy men and women. They are truly faithful. They believe they are the right venture. They are the direct descendants of the founder. They are not the ones who betrayed the founder. Very sabbat of them, don't, don't you think? <laughs> uh, they believe that they are destined to be gods, is the best way to describe it. They are primarily very venture, except they drop one of their disciplines and get sadhana because they are holy. And the sadhana is a holy blood magic. Uh, they are joint approval in between my office and the Ravnus Court's office. As I said, uh, we've seen, a, we brought a couple of them into play. Uh, we're hoping to get more. What we're looking for are players who can be respectful to the culture and understand what they're getting into and understand you just can't go through the motions and pretend it's okay. You kind of have to be respectful while you do it because that's a can of worms that some people can take offense to. Yeah, that's, um, I see that a lot with a lot of the faith-based blood magics is yeah. you really have to respect the cultures that they're coming out of. Yes. Even though we're working in a fictional world and these are yep. twisted fictional versions of, of real life, yep. you, you still have to re respect the real life cultures. Correct. Correct. That's entirely true. And trust me, trust me, I've been rereading a lot of Hindu mythology. It, God, there's a lot of it. <laughs> there is. And it's really fascinating. I uh, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> it is really a I'm rabbit sure hole. It's, it's a great rabbit hole. And I'm sure it's a it's, rabbit hole that I would love to see players dive down. Oh, it, it's, I, mm, yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, ra it raises a lot of questions, it qu especially for, you know, being a Western people of Western faith, uh, Abrahamic faiths and stuff like that. It raises a lot of questions. What do you mean you, you have a patheon? Right. You know, you know, we, we got rid of those. Yeah. We, okay. Oh. It's, it's, it's understanding. It's understanding as much as it's a Pantheon, you kind of really just kind of stick with one of them out of the Pantheon. So but. if someone does want to play one, it would be contact you and other will. Yep. Also understand. I'm also will the sub cord. So, <laughs> So we are, we are quickly known as he is will one, I am will two. But we will work with people. We want to see ideas. We want to see thought. We want to see people going, I'm going to actually research this. Uh, we will also say, you're thinking Kali? You want to follow Kali? Let me know because you're probably going to go, go Sabat. So. That would actually be some interesting sort of um, crossover, some of the, the Asimite anti stuff. Yes, exactly. Uh, you have that. You also have uh, from the Lassam Records office, the cult of Urshkagal, which is much more Babylonian, but it's still kind of tied together in a weird way. There's a lot of um, blood magic cults out there. I know I've been working with Chase as well on a couple things. I've been working with Marcus. Marcus has a really good idea and I think I think it has merit to follow up on it. Not so much. It will, it will help the Camarilla, I think. And I think that's what Marcus is trying to get at as well. And I'm willing to, I, I'm willing to work with him to make it work. So if it's what I think of, think it is we discussed this uh, last week when I interviewed him. Uh, would it be the council? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He, he made a joke of like, that's a bad idea. I don't need one more of those up. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, we were, the council was a th big thing. And I know a couple other cords are on board with it as well. It, and it basically comes down to the society, like the venture court, my office has control of the society of ha the Hague's basically the Hague, which is a very venture-centric lawyer circle. 
Uh, I know there was a couple characters in Maine that were really big into that up there. So it's, uh, yeah, but I, it, yes, yes. I did very briefly play in the cam games up in Maine before yeah. the pandemic and then yeah. pandemic kind of threw everything to the Under, wind and yeah, I threw, shelved my yep. cam characters. Yep. Uh, but it's, it's the Hague is a strong resource of what's the legal precedence what's the legal with the with the traditions with this 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 what's the legal thing of just carry edicts or whatever that could cover this gamut that i don't know about they kind of uh, kind of part of the th their job is to bring actually real world law not really apply it to the cam but give examples of exceptions versus standards it doesn't have to be followed by a prince, but it still puts a little puts a little spin on it. So it, it's helpful, but it's the problem is it's very venture centric and it's very hard to be a non venture entering into it. Yeah, the council is a way we think we could use as a judging body, other than Justicars, to handle the minor issues without needing a Herodin or the Justicars. Even if it's just, here's your, here, let me, let me, let me tell you why you need to stop that before you prefer, you know, you, before you go down that rabbit hole, why infernalism, there's your answer right there. <laughs> uh, so it's, as, as I said, I, I love my, I love this clan. I have a deep, deep respect, uh, respect for the clan and the, there's so much clan history. I mean, you have Mithras of all people. We have Tiamat, you know, we have the sacking of Carthage. Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, hey, they, hey, Carthage, you know, the city of Carthage killed a fourth gen out of it. So, okay. But, you know, it, it happens. It's, it's, the, there's history. There's, you know, so much history. You, Dark Ages, you had the, the Court of the Roses in France ruled by a, ruled by a very powerful, powerful elder Venturu. And then you had the court, the courts of the Holy Roman Empire ruled by Hardestat. <laughs> you had Rome ruled by, by a Venturu, <laughs> you know, it's, the Venturu were everywhere in Europe. Eve, Eve, they were even in the Shadow Reconquista as Tertia, as like, you know, le lesser members of the war. I mean, the Bruja over there outranked them. So it's, but they still went, no, 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 we're still Christians. We're still going to fight for the Reconquista. Da, 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 da. But as, as I said, Venture has a lot of history in Europe. They have a lot of history in the middle, uh, in the early Middle East before the rise of Islam and things like that. Uh, we even, we even have amongst the Ashira, the, the, um, a line of the venture there. Uh, they're not really dominant, but that's more of a cam court approval thing with me, but that's, that's that. So, uh, they do have a purpose. Hell, heck, uh, even the, uh, leopards, leopards of Zion, the Asmite, uh, subsect of uh, he, uh, Hebrew Asimites. Their entire backing is through a, a, a Jewish venture. That's actually something I actually hadn't heard of. Um, I'm guessing that's not, again, I'm mostly Sabbat, so I'm, I guess yep. that's not Sabbat history. <laughs> um, no, they are very schismatic uh, because they still believe in, in the way the, the, um, the, uh, God, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, they, the, they still believe in the Torah. They still believe that they are Jews and thus they are promised heaven even after being cursed with undeath. Okay. That's actually uh, pretty cool. Uh, uh, it's, you know, their, their entire thing is they were, they were basically introduced during the Dark Ages as a splinter sect of, of the Asmites. And it was basically to defend the Jewish people during the Crusades against both the, dep the depredations of Islam and Christianity. Oh, you hurt my mortal family. I don't care if you're uh, a Templar. I'm just going to murder you. 
it, they are, as I said, they are very faith based. They still believe in their faith over the laws of, and they use the laws of Hakim to help keep the faith because, well, they're still shepherds of Cain. So, yep. Or as the as the ass might say, Cain. All right. Um, so I think we're just about done. Yep. Um, I want to thank you so much for for coming in and doing the interview. Uh, no problem not at all, Cheryl. It was a pleasure working with you on this. So, all right. So uh, um, that wraps up the interview today. And, okay. Uh, we'll be back in another couple of weeks with another interview to come out. Awesome. All right. Goodbye. All right. Bye. One Interview by Night is hosted by Cheryl Wesley. Contact and interview prep by Ariel. Editing and music by Christian Keller. If you are interested in playing in Warmall by Night, please visit our website at owbn.net. You can contact the marketing team at owbn-marketing at googlegroups.com. One Interview by Night is presented by One World by Night, produced under the Dark Pack Agreement Paradox Interactive. Portions of the presented material are the copyrights and trademarks of Paradox Interactive AB and are used with permission. All rights reserved. For more information, please visit worldofdarkness.com. This material is not official World of Darkness material and is intended solely for use by One World by Night.